Babesiosis is the topic, and this is a condition caused by Babesia microti, and this is a protozoa, and it acts like a parasite. The reservoir for Babesia are rodents, and the vector are ticks, and in particular, a tick that has a name known as Exodus. And it is this tick that transmits the Babesia to humans. So remember, that's very important. Then what happens is the Babesia protozoa enters the red blood cell of a human, and that's where it divides and this can cause the red blood cells to rupture and that can lead to anemia and I'll talk a little bit about that later. What's very important on medical licensing exam questions is the epidemiology because there are certain areas that are endemic to this Babesia protozoa and I'll show you a map the first is a place in the United States called Massachusetts, and in particular Nantucket. And as you can see, it's all the way on the eastern part. And this map shows Nantucket. As you can see, it's not that far away from Boston, which is a major city in the eastern part of the United States. Another place where this is endemic is a state known as Connecticut. And if you can see here, the red part is Connecticut and here's a blow up of that as you can see it's also on the eastern part not too far from New York and Massachusetts so really what we're talking about is the eastern seaboard area of the US so keep those endemic areas in mind when you're approaching the exam questions wanted to mention risk factors um, in particular, certain populations of patients that are more likely or susceptible to developing this, and they include asplenic patients, patients with AIDS, the elderly population, and also patients that receive blood transfusions because this can be transmitted to someone via a blood transfusion. Symptoms of babesiosis, a lot of general things such as malaise, chills, fever, headache, muscle and joint pains. But a good history is very important to distinguish this, such as a travel to an endemic area or perhaps even the person lives in an endemic area, and also a history of a tick bite if the patient can remember or is aware of that happening. Diagnosis of babesiosis is done by looking at the red blood cells. You have to look at the blood smear under a microscope, and that will show the babesia and I'll show you a photo. So here is a blood smear and as you can see inside the red blood cells is the Babesia protozoa and here's another blood smear that also shows the Babesia inside the red blood cell. In addition to the blood smear a CBC and retic count are important because these two will be able to help you detect the hemolytic anemia that occurs. The retic count of course will be elevated and the hemoglobin and hematocrit will be decreased. Uh, this is an important uh, distinguishing factor um, to separate Babesia from other similar parasite infections. Another test that's helpful is a urine test because that can show hemoglobin in the urine. 
the hemoglobin that's been released from the ruptured red blood cells. And in terms of treatment, there's two medications that are used, atovaquone plus azithromycin. And these are the drugs of choice. So now let's take a look at a few vignettes. One week following a visit to the woods along an eastern seaboard beach, 50-year-old woman develops fever, headache, chills, and fatigue. A blood smear demonstrates protozoa within erythrocytes. Which of the following is the most likely pathogen? Erythrocytes, of course, are red blood cells. And they're telling you that inside these RBCs is some protozoa. And it gives you the appropriate epidemiology of an endemic area, along with all the symptoms of babesiosis. So the answer would be A, Babesia microti. 65-year-old man living in Nantucket, Massachusetts, receiving rituzumab for lymphoma, presents to the emergency department of his local hospital with two days of fever and chills. He is noted to have severe anemia, proteinuria, and hemoglobinuria. Patient is admitted to the hospital and broad-spectrum antibiotics are started for presumed bacterial infection. Soon after admission, he develops respiratory failure requiring mechanical ventilation. A blood smear obtained on day two reveals intraerythrocytic ring forms with parasitemia of 20%. Patient has not traveled away from Nantucket in several years. Treatment with intravenous clindamycin and oral quinine is initiated and the patient also receives exchange transfusions. Parasitemia decreases and the patient no longer needs mechanical ventilation by day four. He is discharged home after 14 days, but his outpatient course is complicated by relapsing parasitemia requiring an additional course of treatment most likely diagnosis is. Parasitemia essentially is talking about the parasite in the blood. And the blood smear is pretty characteristic along with the endemic area and it's a pretty good vignette to point towards babesiosis. A 35 year old woman living in coastal Connecticut finds a tick attached behind her knee in August. Her primary care provider removes the tick, notes it to be an engorged Ixodus scapularis nymph and gives her one dose of doxycycline for prophylaxis of Lyme disease. Two weeks later, the woman develops gradual onset of malaise, fatigue, and fever. She visits her primary care provider again who orders a CBC liver profile and serology for antibodies to Borrelia burgdorferi and Anaplasma phagocytophyllum and obtains a gemsa-stained thin blood smear. The blood smear reveals a small intraerythrocytic ring forms consistent with Babesia microti. Antibodies to Borrelia and Anaplasma are not detected. The most appropriate treatment is with. The drugs of choice for Babesiosis are Atovaquin and Azithromycin. Which of the following is associated with babesiosis rather than ehrlichiosis or Lyme disease? The distinguishing factor that babesiosis has with other tick-related medical conditions is that babesiosis involves the rupture of RBCs, which can lead to hemolytic anemia. So the answer here is C.